when you get old enough to know right and wrong, to understand consequences, and you disobey your parents, it's wrong. And what that means is, at some point in time, it becomes sin in your life. Sin in your life. The wages of sin is death. Now, I'm trying to make this very simple, very plain. But I want you to understand what God is saying to you. It is never acceptable to disobey your parents, even when you're as big as you are. There would, there would be one qualifier. Certainly, we must obey God rather than man. If your parents asked you to do something that was illegal or immoral or sinful of any kind, you obey God first. I think that's why children obey your parents in the Lord. Maybe we could say it this way. Children, obey your parents in doing the right thing. For this is right. When you think about what God says about parent-child relationship, this is equally an important issue. Honor. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. The text says that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Honor simply means to revere. We don't use that word a lot as young people, but respect, admiration, treasure, appreciate are words that you certainly, if you don't understand or know those words, you need to learn what they mean. So here's the deal. When my wife and I first married, we talked about various situations that we grew up in and it seems as if both of our parents, members of the church, one of us grew up on Mars and the other on, you know, Jupiter or something. Our parents were different in so many different ways. My wife was telling me one time, she said, you know, she had a temper when she was young. And her parents would get on to her about something. And she would get mad. She would get angry. And while her parents were talking to her, she would turn and go to her room. And there's a big long hallway. It was one of those ranch style houses that, you know, from one end to the other is a long hallway. And she would, like this, to her room, and then go into her room and slam the door. She acted like she did that several times. We had this little bit of a discussion about that, that my household that I grew up in didn't have that long hallway, and I'm thankful. Because if I ever marched down it like that, that would have been my last march. Because my father basically had the concepts of the old law. So if your parents tell you to clean up your room, some of you may keep a really nice clean room. Clothes picked up, toys picked up, everything's like it ought to be, right? Some of you may be not that good. So if your parents say, clean up your room, and you go, mom, bed, and they say, 
I mean right now. Dad, I'm talking to my friends. Dad, I'm playing boogity doogity or something here. And I'm about to be national champion. And your parents say something like this, Did you hear me? I said, now. So you throw down the remote, you throw down your phone, and you march back to the room, you shut the door, and you start grabbing stuff, and you're throwing it and kicking the bed and throwing stuff, and the cat's in there. You kick the cat, and you, you're, you're mad, and you're cleaning up stuff, well, you're moving it from there to over there, but you're, you know, and you're, you're cleaning up. Let me ask you a question. Have you obeyed your parents? You may in your own mind think you are, just slinging stuff around. But here's a more important question. Are you honoring your parents? Let me stop just a moment to remind you of something very important. Did you know that as children, we learn how to treat God and other people with how we treat our parents? If you don't learn to obey your parents, you're probably not going to be very good in obeying or honoring God. Now, I say this accommodatively. When I was growing up, my dad was God in the sense that when he said move, he meant move. And if he didn't like my attitude when I moved, there was consequences. So from the heart of a child, one could learn to hate their father. Or they could learn to be obedient and respectful. And in your own heart, you choose. Can a parent be too hard, too harsh? Yeah, we're going to talk about that Wednesday night. There's two warnings in these passages that we read that fathers have to be very careful that they do not exasperate or discourage or to provoke their children to wrath. As fathers, we need to pay real close attention to that, what that means. But on the other hand, as children... You need to be able to learn to obey. Why? Because God said to. Noah, he built the ark. You remember that? He built the ark. God said, get on the boat. What did eight people do when God said, get on the boat? They got on the boat. Why did they do that? Genius. They got on the boat because God said to. As simple as that. And because they got on the boat, God saved them. Now, I know I'm really pressing this, riding this horse a long ways down the road, but this is really significant. I don't care how old you are, male or female, If you don't get the idea of obey and honor your parents, much else is not going to matter. Obey your parents. Honor your parents. Respect them. No rolling your eyes. None of this, you know, put your hand up like stop what you're saying to me. None of this folding your arms and... It's being disrespectful. It should not, parents, ever be allowed. 
When you allow your children to disrespect you, you are teaching them to disrespect God. Don't ever forget that. So when we talk about children obeying, when and where should you obey your parents? Well, at home, certainly. When you're at home, you should honor your parents. I, I'm not going to ask any of these older folks here if you're still living at home. Don't want to embarrass you one way or the other about all of that. But my dad had a saying. You've probably heard others say the same thing. As long as you put your feet underneath my table, you're going to do what I say. And what is he saying that to you for? To make you mad so you'll get out and get on your own. Okay? Buy your own milk and cereal. Okay? Now, there has to be order. And what happens when males start to get of age and they want the flap their wings and get out of the nest, God intends for you to get out of the nest. But when you're still at home in the nest, mama and daddy bird rule the nest. Make sure you respect that. When you're away from home, obeying your parents and honor your parents is still important even if you're with your friends. Your parents have specifically told you where you can go, where you can't go. You have told your parents, I'm going out with my friends and we're going to X, Y, Z. When you go out with your friends, make sure you go to X, Y, Z. Your friends, we'll put that in quotes. Your friends or your supposed friends may encourage you to do things that your parents have already told you you can't do. You're dishonoring and disrespecting them to call them and ask them again. Hoping that because you're with your friends, or maybe your parents are with their friends, maybe it's right here in church, and you already know the answer. They've already told you. No, you can't do such and such but you'll go up to them and ask them again, hoping they'll change their mind or they'll be embarrassed to say no to you. Yeah, I've done all that too. And it's not right. When you're at school, respect your teachers. Respect those that are over you. Appreciate them. Why? Did your parents tell you to do that? Then do it. In worship services, we are gathered together on this, the first day of the week, first and primarily and all that we do is to worship and to honor and respect God. What we sing, what we pray, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, when we give, when we study God's Word, we're all in appreciation mode of honoring God. That takes your full Attention, consideration, and to be joking around, fooling around, talking to one another, rather than participating in what you're there for, you're disrespecting God. And you're disrespecting your parents. I've got to tell you a little story. I was 16 years old. I played ball. Was in great shape, was sitting up front with my girlfriend in worship services. And we were talking. We were doing a lot of talking. 
and it wasn't about Jesus. Do you have this sense in which sometimes you may be somewhere and you feel like someone is looking at you? My mother had special radar. And I was talking sweet nothings to my little sweetie. And I felt these x-rays, red beams just melting my brain. And I looked over, and my mother was looking right at me. And she did this. I wanted to say no so bad, but my dad was watching. I knew that would not go well. So I got up. And I went back and I sat down with my mother. Did I mention I was 16? Did I mention that I was... Did I mention that little girl was really pretty? Did I mention that I was embarrassed, plumb out of my skin? And my mother did the right thing. You know why? Because I was disobeying and disrespecting her. And I was disobeying and dishonoring God. Parents, it's not funny when kids don't behave themselves in worship service. Don't let them do it. Children, don't do it. The eyes of the Lord are in every place watching the evil and the good. God knows what you're doing. He sees what you're doing. I preached a lesson like this one day, and Sunday as I was shaking everybody out, there was this little girl, she came up to me, and she said, I I just wanted to tell you, um, my dad, when you was preaching, he was playing a game on his phone. What do you do with that information? (laughs) What do you do with that information? (sighs) So maybe children wouldn't do that if they didn't see their parents doing that. Would Would we go that way? Disobedient children will lose their soul if they don't learn to repent and to do what's right. I want that to soak in for all of us. Secondly, where are our future elders and deacons going to come from? Did you know that there are many churches that don't have men qualified to be elders and deacons because they've raised children that do not fear the Lord? Parents, you must teach obedience and honor by first showing obedience and honor in your own life with God. Some good advice. When I was growing up, first in the denominational church and then later in the Lord's church, I used to hear preachers talking quite a bit about children that misbehave and and are disruptive in worship services and so forth. And there's all been all kinds of expressions used about that. Most congregations today, most buildings, there's cry rooms and so forth. And I'm not speaking against that. There's need for all of those sort of things. But here's something that I think is good advice. Your children need to understand that back there is worse than being in here. Now, whatever you got to do to make that so. 
children are smart. They want to get up and go get a drink of water 14 times during a 20-minute sermon. There's a problem. Children want to get up and go to the bathroom 14 times during a 20-minute sermon. That's a problem. Athens Bible School, we've had to make all kinds of different changes and rules and so forth. Kids can't even have phones. They can't even, we can't even find or see a phone on any kid in a bathroom. Automatic suspension. There's a reason for that. You just let your mind run wild. I tell my kids, look, you're in my class for 35, 40 minutes. You make sure you get a drink or do the necessaries before you get in here. Because when you're in my class, you're not leaving. I kind of grew up that way. My mom used to tell me time and time again, when services start, you're not getting up and going out of the auditorium unless it ain't going to be good. Now, there are exceptions to those kinds of things. Sometimes children will be children and sometimes things happen that is above and beyond your control. But I think it's good advice. When we come to worship God, let's come and worship God and not be spending time out and not worshiping God. That's why we're here. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 10 through 11. I'll read this briefly. This is a great text uh, for parents and for children to read And it's talking about God and His children and how He disciplines them. And in Hebrews 12, beginning at verse 10, For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but He disciplines us for our good so that we may share His holiness. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful, yet To those who have been trained by it afterwards, it yields a peaceful fruit of righteousness. My son and daughter are both adopted. When my son was about six years old, he had a Nintendo. He was playing Nintendo, and he just played Nintendo. And we had to just, you know, nearly take a crowbar and pry that away from him just to get him to eat or to go outside or do something else. So one day he does something he's not supposed to do. And so um, I gave him a choice. One week, no Nintendo. Well, to a six-year-old, one week with no... Y'all know what Nintendo is, right? Y'all still know that? Just saying my age here. Anyway, he thought that was just like the death penalty. I said, or two licks with the green monster. Now... I, because of my son, he was a really tough little kid. If you just touched him on his backside with your hand, your hand would be burning and red, but he, he, doesn't even, I, he didn't even feel that. Tough little guy. So I got me a bigger stick. I found me a fraternity paddle. Those that are familiar with a fraternity paddle, it's about this long. It's about this wide. It's about this thick. And when I got it, it was green. I just left it green. I tried it on myself a few times just to make sure, and it didn't take much. (laughs) It would pop. So I said, no Nintendo for for a week or two licks with the green monster. Dad, I'll take the licks. Okay. So go in your room. Went in his room. Went and got the green monster. Came into his room. I said, okay, lay across the bed. He turned around, and just before he let, he turned back around, he said, Dad, he said, I think one will do it. (laughs) He's negotiating. (laughs) Smart kid. He said, I think one will do it. 
And I said, I think you're right. I think one will do it. <clears throat> Turn around. And I, I, I tell you, I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking one will do it, but this is going to be a good one. I whacked him on the backside. He jumped up off of that bed. He grabbed his backside. He did this a time or two. Big old crocodile tears coming down his face. And finally he turned around and looked at me and he said, Thanks, Dad. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry or what. I didn't know if he'd learned his lesson or not. But I tell you what, anytime he ever did anything, anytime he ever even thought about doing something wrong, I said, Green Monster. And man, he was cured. He was done. The rod of reproof will drive foolishness far from them. Now, I'm not saying everybody go out and get a fraternity paddle or green monster and start whacking your kids, right? You don't want that, do you? I didn't think so. Several years later, my son is 40-something. We were eating one day. And he said, Dad, did you know you were pretty rough on me? And I thought, oh boy, here it goes. He said, but I want to tell you something. I appreciate what you did for me. He said, you were hard on me and you needed to be. And I thank you. Every time I ever disciplined my son or my daughter, it would rip my heart out. And I tell you, the old devil worked in my mind many a time. Is this the right thing to do? Am I doing the right thing? Both of my children are Christians. And I'm thankful to God for that. But I'm going to tell you what. God does not put up with any foolishness. Parents, don't you either. You love your child, you discipline them. Because you love them. Let me conclude real quickly here tonight. You need to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and not lean on your own understanding. Your parents love you. You should love your parents. You might not understand it now, but one of these days, you will appreciate how much they loved you. Read your Bible every day, young people. You don't have to read 10 chapters a day. Read your Bible every day. You need to pray every day. You need to make sure you never miss worship services. Did you know we have a number of people that started coming to Anderson Church because of their kids? They're friends with other kids at church, and they go to school together, and they're talking about how they like Bible classes, and they've encouraged those kids to come to Bible classes. Well, the kids are small enough, they don't drive, so their parents have to bring them. And they're coming because their kids want to be at Bible study. Young people, do you know how great an influence you can have on parents that don't love the Lord? By your faithfulness, by your love of God, you can help encourage them. Always be holy. Always be godly. Did you know that the closer you get to God, parents and child, the closer you get to each other, 
If there's not a good parent-child relationship, this is the reason. I use the same point in the husband-wife relationship. You'll see that tomorrow night. Your relationship with God makes all the difference in the world. We have a little training program on Sunday evenings. And all the little fellas that want to come up front, they'll lead a song, they'll read a scripture, or they'll lead a prayer. Their choice. This little fella, I don't know, he's maybe five, six. He comes up and he doesn't have his song book, doesn't have his Bible, so I'm assuming he's going to pray. So he walks up to the microphone, he pulls the microphone down so he can pray, and he said this beautiful prayer. Dear God, please help me not to go to the devil. Amen. Wow. From the mouth of babes. I hope those parents were proud of that young boy. What a beautiful prayer. Make sure you pray. Don't let me go to the devil. You've listened really well. Elders, I told you they'd be good, right? Good kids. Your elders speak very highly of you all. They love you. And they like being your shepherds. Make sure you respect and obey them too. Okay? Even Rusty. Okay? Even Rusty. If you're here tonight and not a Christian, making up your mind to become a child of God is the most important decision of your life. It not only affects now, it affects the rest of your life, and it affects your eternity. Song of encouragement is going to be sung. Any that might be present that needs to obey the gospel, we encourage you now to come while we stand inside.